Hello friends and welcome to the Southern Mountain Kitchen. Today we're going to make brown sugar glazed pork chops. So what you see on my counter is what we're going to use to make this. And I have two really large pork chops that I'm using to make this recipe. You could probably get away if you had three or four medium to smaller ones using those and using the same amount of glaze to actually make this work. So if this is something that you're interested in having more pork chops, you can swap this out. But I have to tell you, the flavor in this is amazing and I've never been a fan of like sugar glazes on meat or a ham or anything like that but for this this was such a great taste and I think if you like anything like that you got to try this one so we're gonna start out with a larger bowl which we're putting in a third of a cup of light brown sugar then to this we're gonna add two tablespoons of water then to this we're adding one and a half teaspoons of apple cider vinegar Then to that, we're gonna add two tablespoons of soy sauce. Then we have a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. And then we have a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Now, when we get this all in here, we want to mix this up, but we want to be really thorough with it because we want this to be completely mixed through to where anything that's in here is totally distributed amongst all the other parts because we don't want it to set up shop and have too much of like the mustard in one place or whatever. Just mix it really thoroughly. Make sure it's totally combined together. Make sure everything just works with a whisk or whatever you have to use. And then just go ahead and sit it to the side. And we're gonna work on our pork chops. So like I said, I have two of these, but they are room temperature. So you need to make sure they have time to sit before you use them. And as I said, you can add more pork chops to this. Then over top of this, we're gonna sprinkle on a half a teaspoon of paprika, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a fourth of a teaspoon of black pepper. And once we get it on top, we're gonna to rub this in a bit because we really want this into the meat. So that way when this is cooking, this flavor is really in there. So just go ahead, sprinkle it all over the top, press it in, flip them over, and then do the other side. So we just wanna make sure that we really get this all over the meat. Now, as we're doing this, need to keep in mind the fact that you're going to need a large skillet to cook them in because like with mine alone, I had a large skillet and just with these two large ones, it really took up all the space. So just plan ahead on this for when you're going to go to cook it. Now, when we go to put these in our pan, we are not putting a lot of oil in. We're going to put one to two tablespoons of oil. We're not trying to deep fat fry these. We're just trying to fry them lightly so that way they're not really coated in so much oil and grease. So go ahead and make sure you have your um, temperature to medium high heat. And we really want to warm this pan up as we're bringing them into it. Now, as we are cooking these, we're going to put them down in here and let it cook for at least three minutes for the bottom side of this. And then after it cooks, we're going to flip it, then cook on the other side for anywhere of like maybe five minutes or so, then flip it again. And then we're going to cook on the other side again so that way we can make sure that we're totally getting these cooked through because remember when you are cooking these you want to get to an internal temperature of 160 degrees so keep flipping them get them cooked through i mean if you have to cook them like maybe you know a total of like 10 minutes or more to make sure that these are done by flipping them over and over and over do it because we want to make sure that they are completely cooked through and check that temperature and as we go through, we want to make sure that the outside of these gets really like a golden brownish to it. So just keep working with it. And as you go along, just remember, you know, move these back and forth a little bit. We don't want them just sitting in one place in the pan, but we do want it to actually sear the sides of it as it's cooking. So we're going to cook these completely through. And once we're done cooking them, we will be removing them from the pan to actually put the glaze in there and start cooking it before we bring them back to it. But one thing you need to remember, however much oil you end up with in that pan, you're going to have to remove because we want to use the same pan to do all of this. So just keep going and cooking these until you see that they're getting really brown on the outside. That's a good indicator that you should be checking your temperature and just to make sure that they are cooked. So just keep going with this. And as I said, check it periodically. You can check this like after the first like maybe 10 minutes or so just to see what your temperature is. 
And we want to make sure that we get a lot of browning on this because that's going to actually help with the flavor of the whole deal here. So as you can see with mine, I'm getting really brown around the edges and that's a good sign that I'm pretty much to the point where I should check that temperature and take these out. Now, lift them up, let them drip. You don't want to take all that grease with you. It's just better to leave it in the pan because we're going to remove it from the pan anyway. And once we get these completely out of the way, take it to the side, get rid of all that oil, and then bring it back. Now, once we're back onto the heat and the pan is warming up again, we're going to put in three tablespoons of butter. And we're going to melt this down before we do anything else. And this is where we're getting ready to bring in the glaze that we were making earlier and bring it to the pan. Because what we're going to do is after this butter is melted, we're going to work with it and try to thicken it up a bit. So just go ahead and move that butter around, get it totally melted. And if you're on medium high heat, it shouldn't take too long to get that done. Now, bring over your glaze that you made up earlier and just whisk it a little bit to make sure nothing's settled in the bottom because we want to make sure all of this comes out when we're getting ready to use it. When our pan is totally hot and that butter is totally melted, we're going to bring the glaze into this. Now, when you pour it in and you start mixing this up and you start like, you know, using a whisk, a spatula or whatever to do this, it's going to take a minute for this to thicken because it's kind of like making like caramel or something. You really got to actually get the temperature up and stir it up a lot before it will start to thicken for you. So just keep doing this. And as you go several minutes into this, you'll start to notice a difference in the pan and it's going to have a lot of bubbles and it's going to start to look a lot thicker. And then, you know, you're at that point where you're actually getting it right. So just keep going with this, keep moving it around. We don't want it to sit in one place and burn. So keep stirring it. I'm using a whisk just to start out with. Eventually I will get a spatula in here just because of the fact that some of this will stick to the pan on the bottom a little bit. Even with nonstick, you're going to have to move it off of it. And it's not like a setup shot forever. It's just one of these things you need a spatula to, to smooth it off. So as you can see, mine is starting to thicken right now because I have tons of bubbles in the middle of this. So this is important to keep moving this around to make sure that all of the extra stuff that's not as thick is incorporated in. So keep going with this until you get it completely done. And once you get to a point where you feel really good about the thickness of what's going on with this glaze, um, then we're going to bring the pork chops back in. Just remember what you're trying to go for is like a thicker syrupy look to it. So, you know, and as you can see, I'm using my spatula right here and taking stuff off the bottom to make sure it mixes back into the whole glaze. So keep stirring this up until you get to a point where it is completely mixed through and you feel like it's solid. And then we're going to put the pork chops back in. But what we're going to do is put them in, let them sit for a second and flip them. And we're going to do this a few times till we get the glaze completely all over the pork chops and they have the whole coating on them. Now, mind you, when you put this on a plate, you can spoon some of this on top and it's perfectly fine because I did it with mine. I just put it right through the center of the pork chop and that way it stayed on top. So like when you're cutting it and eating it, you're going to get the glaze along with the pork chop. And mind you, some of it might go into your plate, but that's perfectly fine because you can still, you know, as you're cutting, use the pork chop to get some of it off of the plate. So as you can see, mine is starting to change color as it's sitting here doing its deal. And that's what we wanted to do to get covered with the glaze. And the best thing about this is it totally changes the whole idea of eating a pork chop and takes it to something that's really so much better and so much like sweeter and tastier. It's something you don't expect until you eat it and then you're like, okay, this is good. So it's worth a try if you think you like that kind of a sweet taste onto pork or whatever. So go ahead and keep moving these around until you get them really coated. And then you're ready to serve them. And I served mine with some green beans, which had such a great taste with it. And this is what mine looked like on the plate. And I got to tell you, this is really great. So if you've never tried this before, I think you just might like it. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And if you get a chance, check out the Southern Mountain Kitchen website where you can get a free recipe. Check out the cookbooks available from the Southern Mountain Kitchen. And if you'd like to, you could order a cookbook at a discounted price cheaper than Amazon with shipping that is also cheaper than Amazon. So if you get a chance, check it out and I hope you have a great day.